Good foods are sabotaging your weight loss just as much as bad foods. In fact, I'll show you how one of my clients broke through her lifelong cycle of weight loss, regain, weight loss, regain over and over again when she chucked out all food rules. Because just like my client used to, I bet you two have Stockholm Syndrome with food rules right now. First, you are taken hostage by all the messaging around you. Hands up! Do you know what you're doing by eating that bad, bad food? Do you love your body? Then eat this carrot! You know I'm only doing this for you. But then you become a willing hostage. What is going on? This cycle is what's going on. Let's first zoom into the easy thinking our brain defaults to. As Nobel Prize winner Daniel Kahneman describes in his book, Thinking Fast and Slow, we have two systems of thinking. System one is fast, instinctive, and emotional. Like when you cut out carbs for a few days and see a big drop in weight. You're thrilled and immediately conclude carbs are bad, like all the marketing campaigns have been telling you. While system two is slower, more deliberative, and logical. Like when you see the drop in weight after cutting out carbs, you slow down and recognize Hey, weight is not just fat, it's also muscle, water, and glycogen. Which of these did I actually lose when my weight dropped? But this type of slow, deliberative thinking is hard. It takes up a lot of energy. Our brains operate on anything less than death threats is a waste of energy philosophy. And figuring out why a good thing happened definitely goes into the waste of energy pile. And herein, we are fed incomplete science, like carbs are bad, we see proof on the scale, and carbs are bad becomes a belief. But the problem with this strict list of good and bad foods is the domino effect it has on our cravings. The more something is off limits, the more you want it, especially when it's been the center of so many important moments in your life, like when it's been the linchpin for social connections, when it's been there for you during a difficult time. But then, because of your new belief, you feel guilty when you have these bad foods. And this guilt has a counterproductive effect because you're too busy feeling guilty instead of enjoying your food. You don't feel satisfied even after eating it. So you want more. This guilt can snowball into needing relief from guilt. And guess what's been there for you when you were feeling bad before? Those same bad foods. So your consumption of them snowballs. Hell, even brands are in on it. Like this is the slogan of an actual burger company in Seattle. But then that relief you experience is brief because you remember your science beliefs and the whole cycle repeats again. In fact, the cycle gets worse because each marketing campaign may change what's on your list of good and bad foods, but keeps confirming that there is this list of good and bad foods. You just need to figure out what's on them. But as long as these strict lists exist, it leads to cravings and then needing relief from the guilt of giving into those cravings until you're looking at yourself thinking, what's wrong with me? You're no longer thinking this food is bad. You're thinking I am bad. Having coached hundreds of people to their goal weight, I can tell you that chucking out strict food rules is key to breaking this hellish cycle and a prerequisite for lifelong success. So does this mean you can eat whatever you want, how much ever you want? No. Let me tell you the story of one of my badass body boss students. I'll change her name to Clara for privacy reasons. Before Clara joined my badass body boss program, she was doing 1200 calories, 50 gram carbs, and hit four times a week. Clara was putting a ton of effort, but consistency continued to be a problem. She'd go eat out and once slice of pizza would turn into three. After a month of consistency, she'd find herself thinking, I deserve some nachos. And it goes sideways from there for the whole week. And round and round the cycle she went. Weeks of being good, followed by weeks of being bad. She was feeling terrible and losing trust in herself. After Clara joined Badass Body Boss, the first thing we did was replace the many nutrition and exercise targets she had going on with just one target for her to focus on. Why? because of two reasons. One, the principles behind habit building, and two, principles for coaxing long-term fat loss. Let's first dig into the principles behind habit building. If you have ever observed that it takes a friend shorter time than you to make something a habit and wondered why, then listen up. One of the concepts we teach inside Badass Body Boss is the scale of effort, which is the amount of perceived effort toward doing a habit. Here's how it works. Every new habit falls on a scale of effort from one to 10, where one is effortless and 10 is I have to think about this 
this 100% of my life all the time, otherwise I'll fall off the wagon. Now, the scale of effort for doing any habit operates according to the following principles. Principle one, an action at any level can down level if you stick to it consistently for long enough because your body will adapt. Principle two, the higher on the scale you start at, the longer you'll have to do it consistently before you can down level. And principle three, if you do not do a habit consistently, you will not down level. Think of yourself on a boat at the shoreline of an ocean and you're trying to paddle to the middle of the ocean. The waves are very rough near the shoreline. If you start high on the scale, you cannot afford breaks or else you'll be immediately washed back to shore and have to start over. But if you're lower on the scale, you can afford to take breaks and for longer periods of time without being washed back to shore. So basically, if you start at a higher level of perceived effort, it takes longer, it's harder to stay consistent, and you cannot afford to take breaks. Some people feel like they've been sticking to a habit for many months, but they started at a level eight or nine, and they take a break from doing the habit every other weekend or every week. But each time you take a break from the habit, you're resetting your counter back to zero. So you feel like you've been sticking to a habit for many months, but really you have only been sticking to it for a week or two. And so the trick is to pick a habit that's a more moderate level of effort. And you wanna pick one habit so you can channel all your energy to last until you can down level. And reason two for only one target is because of the principles for coaxing long-term fat loss. You must have heard the phrase, the thing that made you lose your first 10 pounds is not enough to make you lose your last 10 pounds. This is absolutely true because of how your physiology works. When you first start trying to lose weight, your body has plenty of fat stores. It isn't as freaked out by you eating less or different or burning more calories because there is so much buffer in case you run out of food. But as you continue to lose your fat stores, your body starts freaking out a little or a lot, depending on how drastic your changes. It's seeing your fat stores deplete and it doesn't trust that you will always have access to food. I mean, for millions of years, our ancestors went through famine and abundance food cycles. And so that's what your physiology is expecting. So as you lose more and more fat, your body starts pumping the brakes on your fat loss. And the bigger the changes, the more aggressively it pumps the brakes. By picking one target, we reduced the size of changes Clara's body experiences, and thus it's coaxed more easily into allowing fat loss. So altogether, Clara was able to channel her energy into one thing that is put in minimum effort for maximum progress, the dream. Now guiding her to her one target was step one, but in my experience as a coach, it's not enough because ultimately Clara's goal and the goal of Badass Body Boss is to enable her to independently maintain her goal size for life. And to be able to do this, to use an old proverb, she needs to learn how to fish instead of being handed the fish. For example, let's talk about deciding what to have for lunch. How do you decide what to have? Should you always have salads? What if you're craving a cookie? And what if you know from the past experience that if you ignore the cookie now, you'll probably end up having three cookies later? The problem with these questions is they are contextless, meaning they assume the correct answer is always the same no matter what. But that's like saying whenever you're at a fork in the road, you should always turn right. That makes no sense. What's missing is the destination, the goal, the context. Like, are you super hungry at that lunchtime? Are you craving a particular food? What kind of energy needs do you have for the next few hours? For example, if you're say about to hit the gym versus work at your desk, your lunch choice could be quite different. Do you see what I mean? The correct answer to these questions changes based on the situation Clara is in. And there are so many situations Clara can find herself in that writing her a prescriptive plan for each situation doesn't make sense. It's like trying to write a prescriptive rule book on how to live life. You can't. Life is unpredictable and full of surprises. Instead, what we did was teach Clara the science principles behind fat loss, aka replace incomplete science with complete science. For example, here is a post from one of our other Badass Body Boss students, Naomi, on how she internalized the principles to answer the simple question of, what do I have for lunch? Based on these handful of principles, no matter what situation life throws at her, she knows what to do. And this education of complete science extends to how weight loss is influenced by our biological, nutritional, and movement factors, because the relationship isn't straightforward. Often I get people reaching out to me asking to lose five pounds a week. This is not only undesirable because weight loss can also mean muscle loss, but also five pounds loss per week is impossible to sustain after the first few weeks because remember, your physiology is actively reacting to the changes you make. It's pumping brakes when you go too fast, so you tackle getting unstuck from a different angle, and then your physiology reacts to that either by allowing it or blocking it, and so on. What this results in is non-linear progress, where you see steady weight loss rate and then sometimes get stuck or your weight it goes up, followed by steep drops, and so on. In Badass Body Boss, one of the practices we teach is to unlock the relationship between your biology, actions, and physical changes. For example, some of our students, like Clara, have observed a one-week delay between overeating and their physical measurements increasing in size. What this means is, say they overeat in week one, and yet they see their body measurements decrease at the week 
one check in. In week two, they're totally on track, but see their body measurements increase. Now imagine if you didn't know about the one week delay your body undergoes. You'd be very frustrated and confused. You'd think your body is broken. But by practicing correlating your actions, biology, and physical changes in a structured manner, you'd know exactly what to expect. And because it all adds up, you feel in control. You know what's happening and you feel confident about how to get back on track. It is exactly these three steps that broke Clara out of this hellish cycle. Knowing complete science changed her beliefs to one of flexibility instead of the old strict rules of bad and good foods. For example, now when she goes out to eat, she only has one target to meet, which makes staying on track a whole lot easier, even when eating out. And knowing the principles behind the foods allows her to optimize for her goal at the party. If that's enjoying cake, she can go for it without guilt because she knows exactly what to expect at her check-in and how to recover with confidence if needed. This makes no foods off limits and mitigates her cravings from one of uncontrollable desire to a plan for desire. And what this does is it cuts out needing relief from guilt because there is no guilt as long as she is owning her choices versus her choices owning her. As a result, Clara saw her cravings plummet because she was now balancing her physical and emotional needs around food on a daily basis. She was feeling confident and in control. And then she hit her lowest weight in 10 years and things started backsliding. Namely, she stopped trying to balance her physical and emotional needs and instead her emotional needs always took precedence. What happened? So what do we do next? So usually in cases like this, there are beliefs around- This is Lucy, my co-coach at Badass Body Boss. There are beliefs around getting to the goal that holds people back. So in Clara's case, we found that she felt she would be abandoning her sister who is also trying to lose weight if she got to a smaller size than her sister, right? So she was self-sabotaging herself to prevent this. And this was totally invisible to her until we prodded her with more pointed questions. And while Clara's situation revealed a fear of success, there are all sorts of other beliefs that can hold people back. Um, so for example, lack of self-worth which causes people to not believe they deserve getting to their goal size, and so they self-sabotage. Or it could be that food is your only coping mechanism, and you need to spend time diversifying your coping mechanisms. And there are so many reasons. And once the beliefs are brought into the light, you can't unsee it then, you know? And that's when real long-lasting change happens. So many of our students have done it, and I think anyone can do it. I 100% agree with Lucy on this. And to help you do this for yourself, here is a video that walks step-by-step -step through the structure we use inside our Badass Body Boss program to figure out the root cause of self-sabotage among our students. Check it out and remember, you can do it.